Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, August 3rd, 2010. I'm Jill Eckhart with your Erner Berry Market Report, sponsored by the 2010 Innovative Beef Symposium, August 25th through the 26th in Denver, Colorado. Today, foodmarket.com is reporting grocery chain Public Supermarket said today its second quarter net income climbed nearly 16% as sales rose. Public Supermarket said its profit rose to almost $350 million in the second quarter, up from $300.8 million in the previous April to June period. For more on this story and other news from the center of the plate, head to foodmarket.com. Now, let's set the tone. According to the weekly Shell Lake inventory report released yesterday by the USDA, total inventory increased by 2% during the past week, led by a 3% expansion in that of mediums. Demand nationwide is only fair, and as such, total supplies are adequate for current requirements. Eggs for breaking are sought, but rarely offered to this channel. Looking at poultry in the chicken market, activity reflects a balanced yet quiet undertone at most points of sale today. Wogs and whole birds are rated about steady to steady. Industry players are closely monitoring the stalemate concerning those plants eligible to ship products to Russia. Dark meat lines, despite the concern on exports, are still receiving an active call. Talking turkey, this morning was fairly quiet regarding market input, but the majority of listed lines remain steady to better. Breast meat continues to field an active inquiry, and sellers of this item must be given the upper hand. The same can be said for fresh de-strap tenders, scapula, and breast trim. Whole birds can be rated steady to firm, with product lines being snug for spot needs as well as out front. As a reminder, check out Erner Berry's turkey letter released this evening on Comtel. Moving over to Red Meats with an inside look at the pork market, here's Erner Berry market reporter Andrew Knox. Thank you, Jill. One of the biggest stories in the pork market right now is the unusually high cost of bellies. So high, in fact, that yesterday's quote of $140 per hundredweight for 14, 16 bellies is over 66% higher than a year ago and is the highest price on record to ever be paid for fresh or frozen bellies. Pork bellies are the item from which bacon is produced. And being that the summer months are traditionally the peak of the bacon season due to demand for BLT sandwiches, one would expect to see higher prices during this period. What makes this year exceptional, however, is the shortage of belly supplies that we are experiencing right now. Pork production is generally lighter during the summer months, and most in the industry will make up for this decrease in fresh bellies by pulling product from their pre-built freezer inventories. This year, however, freezer stocks as of June 1st were less than half of what they were last year. To make the pool of available bellies on the market even thinner, pork production, while typically low around this time, was even 6.8% lower last week than a year ago. This shortage of both newly produced and previously frozen supplies has forced buyers to compete for the limited amount of product with record high bids. Thank you, Andrew. Looking at beef, boxed beef markets are about steady as of this morning. Live cattle market sellers try to get back some of last week's decline, but bids have not yet developed. Slaughters start the week fairly even with where they stood in the previous week. Trading activity throughout the boneless beef market has been limited as of this morning. Undertones for the fresh 50s are still steady to slightly weaker. Leaner boneless beef is rated mostly steady. Several packers have indicated that demand is more active than they had anticipated. Overall movement throughout the imported beef complex thus far has been light. Most sellers seem content to take a wait-and-see approach to the market as availability overseas is reportedly still limited. Now here's Matt Shivers with a look at some economic indicators. Thanks, Jill. According to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, personal income for June increased $3 billion, or less than 0.1%. Disposable personal income, or DPI, for June increased $5.1 billion, also less than 0.1%. Personal consumption expenditures, or PCE, decreased $2.9 billion, again less than 1%. In May, personal income increased $40.5 billion, or 0.3%. DPI increased $36.9 billion, or 0.3%. And PCE increased $8.6 billion, or 0.1% based on revised estimates. Real disposable income increased 0.2% in June compared with an increase of 0.4% in May. Real PCE increased 0.1% compared with an increase of 0.2% in May. Of notice, real personal income expenditures in the food service and accommodations industry increased in the second quarter of 2010. Back to you, Jill. 
Thank you, Matt. Don't forget, check out Erner Berry's seafood video when it's released this afternoon on Comtel. That's your Erner Berry Mid-Morning Tone, brought to you by the 2010 Innovative Beef Symposium. Be there to be the first to hear about new value-added cuts, how to fabricate, merchandise, and menu them. Space is limited, so head to beefinnovationsgroup.com to register.